Hi friends! Today let's talk about contractual magic. What I mean by contractual magic is when you sign a contract to get something through magic at a set price that both parties have agreed upon beforehand. However, it always seems to backfire against you. Let's take Ariel for instance. Ariel would like to have legs so that she can go on land to experience life as a human and to meet Prince Eric. Ursula agrees to give Ariel legs at a price, namely her voice. Ariel agrees on this price and signs the contract without really reading it through. This poor, unfortunate soul. Ariel gets what she wants at the agreed price, however Ursula forgot to mention that she was going to use Ariel's voice to seduce Eric, making sure Eric will never kiss her, and therefore Ursula can get possession of Ariel's soul. Ursula isn't the only Disney villain that we see operating through contractual magic. Dr. Facilier from Princess and the Frog does it too. We see Dr. Facilier give a guy some hair. Make it happen, make it real get everything. Give Prince Naveen more green and give Lawrence a bit more power. However, these deals backfire on all three of the characters. The man that gets more hair turns into a hairy monster. And you won't lose what you have. Prince Naveen turns into a green frog. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Prince Naveen. I'm Maldonia. And Lawrence only looks like a prince. He isn't a real prince, which means he has no real power. And he has to keep his froggy boss in a jar or he will lose his dream. Oh dear. Dr. Facilier doesn't actually ask Naveen or Lawrence for any kind of payment other than some money. Though we do see later on in the movie that his real payment is to get all the souls of New Orleans. I'll have the entire city of New Orleans in the palm of my hand. So he is still getting something out of this deal too. The beauty of contractual magic is the magicians never lie. Ursula does give Ariel legs in exchange for her voice. Dr. Fessier does give Prince Naveen more green. They just never really explain the fine print or how they're going to accomplish things. Admittedly, the kings of contractual magic have to be Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time and Crowley from Supernatural. Both of them make repeated deals throughout their respected series and often with the same characters. In the very first episode of Once Upon a Time, we see Rumpelstiltskin. Gosh, that's a mouthful. Let's just call him Rumpel from now on. We see Rumpel make a deal with Snow White and Prince Charming. They want information about the curse that is about to hit them. In return, Rumpel asks to know the name of their unborn child. You want to know about the Queen's threat? Tell us what you know. Oh, tense are they. Fear not, for I can ease your mind. But it's going to cost you something in return. No, this is a waste of time. What do you want? Oh, the name of your unborn child? Absolutely not. Deal. Rumble describes what the curse will be like and how it's going to affect them in quite vivid detail. He goes on to explain how their baby will be important to breaking the curse and that she will break it when she is 28. Prince Charming decides to not hold up their end of the deal and leave, but having received an extra piece of information she wasn't expecting, Snow White lessens her guard. She decides to keep up her end of the deal and gives Rumple the name of their unborn child, Emma. Emma. Her name is Emma. My guess is Snow decides to go against Charming and hold up their end of the deal because she was hoping that Rumpel would not hurt their baby, considering she is the one to break the curse. What Rumpel forgets to mention is that he helped Regina learn magic so that she could release this curse. He also now knows Emma's name, therefore her identity and can decide whether to help or hinder her when she arrives at Storybrooke. So, now Rumpel has all of the information. He knows who releases the curse, when the curse is released, who will break the curse, and when they will come to break it. 
As for Crowley, one of the most memorable deals that he makes, in my opinion, is the one he makes with Bobby for his soul. Back at the end of season 5, Bobby, Sam and Dean need to collect the rings of the four horsemen so that they can lock Lucifer back up in his cage. Though they already have three of the rings by this point, they're still missing one, Death's Ring. Crowley shows up at Bobby's house and explains that he can get Death's whereabout, for a price, namely Bobby's soul. Bobby is hesitant at first, as he knows that Crowley just cannot be trusted, but in the end he agrees because... The world's gonna end. Seems stupid to get all precious over one little soul. So, the contract is... signed. Though at first Crowley seems to be genuinely helpful, it turns out he's decided to not give Bobby his soul back immediately. Or rather, he has, but his definition of as soon as possible is very different to the Winchesters and Bobby's. Crowley has decided to keep Bobby's soul until Lucifer is back in his cage, as insurance. Oh, you know what, I'm sick of this. Uh, give him his soul back now. I'm sorry, I can't. Can't or won't? I won't, all right? It's insurance. He knows the brothers can't kill him as long as he has Bobby's soul, so he knows he has peace of mind. It seems that contractual magic is a villain's tool, used to hurt or hinder the hero. It's also always known that these villains use contractual magic in this way. You mean to tell me this all happened because you were messing with the Shadow Man? He was very charismatic. Ugh. So, given that, I'm sure you think you would never sign a contract with one of these people, don't you? Well, think again. These people are very powerful manipulators. They use the same technique each time. First of all, they talk to you about your life with the magic they would give you how it would be amazing and beautiful and exactly what you want. But there is this little spell that I know. That's so. Results are 100% guaranteed. Okay. They always stress it won't cost too much. It won't cost much, just your voice. They act very open about the price, gaining your trust. They'll often talk about a different price or give you something extra that you weren't expecting. The child is safely and on it. 28th birthday, the child will return, the child will find you. They rush you into signing the contract, which means you do not have time to read the oh-so-important fine print. Shake my hand. Come on, boys, won't you shake a poor sinner's hand? <laughs> the technique is simple, yet effective, but their most powerful tool is they can read people really well. They can see what it is you want and what you're willing to give up, and can twist it so that it seems you're not giving up much, but gaining everything. And that's exactly how they get you. Caught off guard and with the promise of all your dreams coming true, who wouldn't give up their voice? Or their soul? Yeah, okay, that was a pretty big thing, but he did think he was going to get it back immediately. So, is there anything you want so badly you would stop thinking straight if someone offered it to you? I mean... I know if someone told me I could breathe underwater without any kind of equipment, I would definitely go for it. And end up with gills. Or no longer able to come on land. Or turned into a fish. What have you done to me? Look at me! I'm an anchovy! <gasps> Maybe I should think this through a little bit more. Tell me in the comments what your dream is. Maybe we can come up with some kind of a deal. If any of you can get me to breathe underwater, hit me up. Please make sure to click on the thumbs up if you enjoyed and I hope you consider subscribing. Until next time, happy bubbles!